If you've uninstalled the plugin on FL Studio, but it still stays in your plugin list, that's bad news. If you try to reinstall it, it probably won't work. Even if you delete the DLL file, it may stay there. So if you don't want that plugin in your list anymore, this is the video for you. Because the good news is this video is going to reveal a quick and easy way to solve this problem once and for all. But before we fix all our mistakes by dying and respawning again and again, I've got a question for you. That question is, what's a tool that all musicians should use? Leave your answer in the comment section down below. If you don't know, don't worry because I'll be revealing the answer later on in the video. Just stay tuned. Now let's get into it. So there's a glitch that happens in FL Studio. It's happened to me a lot of the time when I'm using Waves plugins. If I've uninstalled a Waves plugin, for example, if I've had an error where it says Wave Shell is not around or whatever that error is, I've made videos on that. So go check that out for other solutions on that. But if that's happening and then I delete that plugin, I uninstall it or whatever, it will still appear in my plugin list right about now. It's not because I've solved this issue, but let's say that Clarity VX was still appearing in my plugin list. This is what you've got to do in order to get rid of it. Even after deleting the DLL file and uninstalling, watch my videos on how to uninstall Waves plugins. And yeah, that will show you how to delete the DLL file and all that sort of stuff as well. But this is what you need to do next. You need to go to your PC. So go to PC, go to local disk, Go to users, go to the name of your user profile, go to documents, then image line, then FL Studio, then presets, then plugin database, then effects. And here you will see a bunch of different effects. Okay, these are all the Waves plugins that are currently installed, I believe. And if I was to uninstall one of them, these are going to just stay in my list because in order to get rid of that, you need to delete these FST files. Okay, that's all you need to do. Delete the FST file of the plugin that you want to get rid of that is still in your plugin list. That's how it's done. And then if you reinstall it, you won't have to deal with the same error as long as you've you know, fixed the install. So that's how that works. If you want to learn how to create your own beats from scratch, you can use my easy nine step trap beat making formula in my free course. This course will take you from making your melody all the way to mastering your beat and it's absolutely free the link is in the description down below go to jcarteray.com forward slash free trap course and because this course is free you've got nothing to lose except for the opportunity to join this course because it won't be free and available forever so join right now while you still can link down below earlier on i asked you a question and i'm a man of my word so i'm going to answer that question right now that question was what is a tool that all musicians should use and the answer to that is the circle of fifths now let's open up the circle of fifths in Google right now. The circle of fifths will help you with making music in two major ways. The first way is to quickly identify how many sharps or flats are in any particular key. For example, in G major or E minor, there is one sharp, two sharps in B minor, three sharps in F sharp minor, four sharps in C sharp minor, and those sharps go from F, C, G, D, A, E, B. For example, in E minor, the first sharp is F, so F sharp. In B minor, it's F and C sharp. In F sharp minor, it's F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp, and on and on and on, okay? That is the first thing. It will help you learn your keys very, very well if you just have this, print it out, put it on your wall or something like that. The next thing is it helps you with creating chord progressions. For example, three of the main chords in every key is the first chord, which is the root chord, the fourth chord, which is the subdominant chord, and the fifth chord, which is the dominant chord. Now, the fifth chord has a lot of tension in it. The fourth chord has a lot of tension, but less than the fifth. So it's nice to go from the one to the four to the five, or five, four, one, whatever you wanna do, these chords are gonna be big tools in your toolbox. And it's very easy to work out what those chords are in each key, by looking at the circle of fifths. For example, if we go to A minor, which is what I always use to start my beats, the A chord is a root. So here's A. And then the E chord is the fifth. And the D chord is the fourth. So how did I find that out? Here's the A. If we go to the right, this will be our fifth chord. If we go to the left, this will be our fourth chord. 
So A, E's our fifth, D's our fourth. If we go to E minor, B would be our fifth, A would be our fourth. And that's how you can easily find the one, four, and five, which are the most important chords in your chord progressions in your key. And if you can find those very quickly, then you'll be able to make some great chord progressions, or at least have a great starting point. So use the circular fist is gonna help you out a lot. And what I just taught you is gonna help you out a ton as well. Watch my videos on music theory if you want some more in-depth information. If you want me to go further into this sort of stuff, leave a comment down below. I don't make those videos on this channel because they don't do well yet. People do not search for that sort of stuff. But if you want them, let me know. Let me know that you're interested and I may make those and on that note if you got any questions or any other tutorials you want me to make let me know in the comment section down below check out that video next i'll see you there peace out